Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. And in this video, I am going to go through a really useful feature in Capture One, and that is the color balance tool. So let me pop over and show you what I'm talking about. So the color balance tool, uh, which some people may also know as the three-way color corrector, is probably one of my favorite tools in Capture One. And part of the reason for this is because my background is actually in motion graphics for video work. So I've spent a lot of time working with programs like DaVinci Resolve and such software. So the, so the three-way color corrector interface, I'm used to it from working with video. And when this was added to Capture One a few years ago, I was delighted because, and it's quickly become my favorite tool. So it's also something that I get asked about a lot. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how to use it and show it to you in action. So let me dive right in. So I have this photo here of New York City, and this is actually taken quite a bit ago. Uh, the skyline has changed quite a bit since then. But anyway, this was taken... Uh, fairly late in the evening the sun was going down and I still have my white balance set to daylight so everything's kind of gone blue so I could just use the white balance tool and adjust the white balance to kind of compensate for the blueness and that would work fine gives you a perfectly fine image but using the color balance tool will actually give me a lot more creative control and I can um, take this image even further so it's also a good way to show you how to use it. So let's have a look and see what we can do. So there's a number of tabs in the color balance tool and the first one is master and this will kind of give you a overall control. And this basically adjusts the tint of the image. So if I bring this up here towards the warm side, you can see I've made the image much warmer. And you have this little notch here on the outside of the circle and you can just drag that and this will actually rotate it around. And either side of this, we have two rings. So on the left hand ring, I, this controls the amount of tint, so I can drag this up and down to kind of control the overall amount. So separate to the master control, we have three-way, and this separates your uh, color corrections into shadow, mid-tones, and highlights. So this allows you to control the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights um, completely independently. So for example, I can give a nice blue tint to the shadows, and then I can give a warm tint to the mid-tones, and then I could go with something completely crazy for the highlights, like green, but no, we won't do that. Uh, I can warm up the highlights as well. So that gives you an idea of the kind of colors, color controls that we can do, but there's more to it than that as well. So you see on the right-hand side, there's another kind of arc slider, and each of these is just the brightness for each section. So I can darken down the blacks or the, the shadow parts of the image with this control, or I can raise them up. And then again, for the midtones, I can adjust them up and down this way. And for highlights again, we have the same control as well. So let me just reset all this and we will go work about correcting this image. So I'm gonna go back to the master control and I'm just gonna warm it up a little because I don't wanna to go too far with the master. I want to do most of my work with the three-way. So I'm going to go to three-way, and again, I'll start by using the mid-tone to warm up our image. And we don't adjust it too far, we kind of want it more towards the orange side. And again, I can control the amounts with this arc slider on the left. And that's not too bad. And that's probably similar to what we would get just with a straight uh, white balance adjustment. But I also want to add a bit of color contrast into this, so I'm going to drag I'm going to make the shadows a bit bluer, and I'm also going to use this control on the right-hand side of the shadows to darken this down. Now, one of the things you may notice is these controls are actually quite small. So if you see here, we have three more tabs, shadow, mid-tone, and highlights. This just basically gives you a big version of the controls on the three-way. So again, I can adjust this. I can increase the saturation here and makes it more blue in the shadows, and then I can kind of darken them down a bit more and switch to the mid-tone. And I can adjust the brightness of my midtones here. And I can increase the saturation effect of the tint if we want to go quite warm. And then on our highlights, we can just warm up our highlights a bit. So you can see this is affecting the kind of the top of the image up here. You don't want to overdo it either, so I can brighten them up or darken them down as well. 
Okay, and that is if we see there before and after. So that's how we started. And that is after. And that is just using the color balance tools. I haven't touched anything else. We can also do something like, if I go back to the three way, uh, say we want an, an early morning feel or we want to kind of get that kind of purple tones in. So we could maybe, we want to keep the shadows blue because I kind of like that. And we can kind of go more towards purple. And that might be too much, so we can kind of tone this back a bit. And then again, we can kind of tweak the highlights. Keeping the highlights kind of towards the orange spectrum, side of the spectrum, has a nice effect as well. And now you can see you've got that kind of dawn or dusk effect going on um, with the kind of nice purple tones. And again, this is just using the three-way color corrector. So you can see how powerful it is to actually have independent controls here. Um, and again, we can change the shadow settings for whatever we want. We could make them green if you want kind of a, or even a more of a mauve color, or a, sorry, more of a turquoisey color. And again, by adjusting the, using the sliders on the left-hand side, we can control the amount of that. So something like that also works quite well. So before and after. So as you can see, you can achieve quite a bit of an effect with just using the color balance tool. And the other thing as well is the color balance tool will work on layers. So you can actually, you could stack up multiple ones if you want and use gradients to blend between them. Um, unlike the normal color editor, which doesn't work on layers. So there is a quick guide to using the color balance tool and to kind of give you an idea how you can push this even further. In the spirit of all the best cooking shows, here's one I prepared earlier. So in this image, I have done some additional, additional tweaking. So I've kind of adjusted the contrast here and I've adjusted the high dynamic range to bring the highlights in. So we're getting more of the image up the top. And also I have done a levels adjustment. So if we switch back to this and see if we can kind of match it. So bring the contrast in or bring the highlights down and then we bring up our contrast a bit and we do auto levels. So here I'm still using the purple so we can swing this back more towards the warmer side and maybe increase the saturation on it. And there, it's not exactly the same but it's kind of a similar effect. And then if I wanted, if it's now, this is now kind of too dark in the shadow areas, I can just bring this up slightly as well. So as you can see, there's quite a range of effects you can get just by using the color balance tool. So I hope you found this interesting. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you get notified when I post new videos. And thanks everybody for watching and see you next time. <laughs>